I am somewhat of a hoarder. I don't even like pronouncing that word. Hoarder. Hoarder. And while it may not be to the extent of the people on the show, hoarders, it still poses a problem for my storage space. It may have stemmed from my upbringing of making sure not to waste anything. Why? Because you save money that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, genius. My parents always told me to finish my food. If there was one or two pieces left of that longanisa, someone better be finishing that either now or tomorrow when you pack it for lunch when you go to school. I don't care if the kids make fun of you just because you're not eating some lame-ass Lunchables. And that was the mindset I grew up with. If you have something you don't need at the moment, you'll probably need it later. Better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. I used to have a bunch of plushies that I've accumulated throughout my childhood. I had them all on display on my headboard shelf, but once I hit university, I thought, maybe it's time to retire these. Except this one, I like this one. But I also thought, these hold a special place in my heart. Maybe I'll save them until I get married and have kids, and then I'll just give it to them. Therefore, I'll save money by not having to buy new toys and assume that my unpredictable kids want my old ones. Maybe one or two years pass and I find out my parents donated them without my acknowledgement. I was a little sad, but then I remembered that a lot of them were gifts from exes, so I got over it eventually. Okay, hold on. Question for you guys. Do you keep gifts from exes? I know a lot of people like to purge everything they own that reminded them of a preceding partner, but I find myself keeping a lot of the things I got, more so if they were functional. But even if they were aesthetic, like a ring or a bracelet, I kept them too. I didn't keep them to honor the gifter, but simply because I thought it looked nice on me. Is... is that weird? Some people find that weird, but here's my opinion. If you gave me something, you've relinquished your ownership of that object and have transferred it to me. It is now my possession. And whether or not that means something deeper or more sentimental is up to me alone and no one else. There was one time when I got out of a relationship of which I obtained a certain accessory. I eventually met another girl whom I was getting to know, and during that time, I've already moved on from my ex, like 100%. Anyway, I often wore this tungsten ring that was given to me by the aforementioned ex, and the girl brought it up and asked where I got it. Before I answered, I already predicted the kind of response I would get, so I tried to explain how it didn't mean anything, and I just simply liked the ring. Well, she proceeded to deny my claim and tried to convince me that I still had underlying feelings for my ex. <gasps> Bitch, you don't know me. She was very upset, and I understood why she would assume that, and I was willing to stop wearing the ring if I knew it upset her, but she just wouldn't trust my feelings. I didn't know how else to convince her otherwise. Partially bad move on my end, I admit, but the ring was technically mine, I just happened to obtain it from an ex. If she preferred I wore something that honored her, then she was welcome to get me something. For me, sentiment overrides aesthetic. We weren't exactly dating, but if a new partner got me a new ring, even if they didn't get the right size, I'll still wear it over the old one. Anyway, back to hoarding. I'd say it was much worse when I was younger. I used to find random crap on the ground that I thought could be purposed for something else. I may not know that purpose at the moment, but I believed I would later. Do you guys remember... Beyblades? I mean, they're still around, but when they were the new fad at every school, I used to find little metal pieces on the floor because I looked at the ground a lot when I walked around as a kid, but I would always try and modify my Beyblades with these pieces. Granted, they may have made my tops a little more dangerous than they already were, but I had a lot of fun customizing it with the trash that I found, which I turned into my treasure. But even after the Beyblade hype, I still kept all those metal pieces in a box that's probably still somewhere in my parents' basement. The same goes for cosplay, which is odd for me because I don't even cosplay that often. But I'd find random things where I think, hmm, this might be useful for a future cosplay. For example, my sister would walk into my room and be like, hey, I found Velcro, do you need Velcro? And I'd be like, no, not at the moment, but I'll take it. But the thing is, by the time I did need that Velcro, years later, I've already misplaced it, and I would have to dig through boxes and bags of other hoarded objects. And if I needed that Velcro in a rush, I'd probably just buy new Velcro. And then I'm just left with that lone wolf Velcro that's somewhere in the house, probably met up with the Beyblade pieces and became friends because they had a common abandoner. <sighs> I've got t-shirts and posters aplenty. I've got headphones and coupons galore. 
You want charging cables that don't work anymore? I've got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. But I probably shouldn't because my condo has limited space. The way I got around this was simple. Clean up every now and then. Oh my goodness, Dom, you're a freaking genius. We're in 2017 while you in 3017. I tend to keep a lot of the original boxing or packaging of products I've bought, thinking I might sell them on Craigslist someday, but really I know I'd be too lazy to do that, so I should just recycle them. If there are clothes at the end of the closet or at the bottom of the pile in my drawers that I haven't worn in a year, then it was probably time to retire them. Donate them, something, just give them up. I know it sounds easy on paper, but personally, if I don't use an item on a regular basis, then it's probably better that someone else does. Hey guys, just want to let you know that this video has been brought to you by Audible, an awesome provider of premium audiobooks and other products. If you head on over to audible.com slash domics, link below, you can claim a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. One that I'm currently listening to is Ernest Cline's Ready Player One. I saw it on the front page and noticed that it involved video games, so I did not hesitate to check it out. There will also be a movie based on the book, so I thought I'd get the original experience beforehand, and I'm pretty hooked. If your interests involve video games, role-playing, virtual reality, and how they've evolved into a futuristic dystopia, then Ready Player One's my top recommendation. Plus, Will Wheaton reads it, so that's a treat. But if that's not quite your cup of tea, Audible's got a huge selection of other titles at your disposal. The app's available on most devices, so you can listen at home or on the go. Again, that's audible.com slash domics for a 30-day trial and a free audiobook. Heck, even if you don't stick around, that's a free book for you. Enjoy!